Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy and welcome to Inspired Living TV where we inspire lives and empower entrepreneurs. And maybe you are in a place in your life right now where you want to start a business, you have this big dream and vision, but you're worried that people won't take you seriously. Or maybe you're a pioneer starting a new territory, a new path in your life and people aren't the quickest to join you. <laughs> well today I have such a treat for you because I am sitting down with the beautiful talented and incredibly successful Paige Adams Geller. Hi, I'm Paige Adams Geller, the creative director and the founder of Paige Denim. I've watched our brand become a true industry leader. And one of the things that I'm most excited about is our fabric innovation. Transcend has really taken us to a new level and successfully proven that we can merge technology and fashion to create a real gene that is unparalleled in fit, comfort, and innovation. Paige, thank you so much for welcoming me into your gorgeous home. Oh, thank you. I am moving in shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I love sleepovers. So it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I have had the pleasure of getting to know you a little bit over the last couple of years. And I just, I love your story. And I'm really excited for you to share it with our viewers today. Because I think when people look at you, they probably think, of course she's successful. Because, I mean, you didn't get hit with the ugly stick page. You're a beautiful woman. But it hasn't Thank always you. been that way for you. And so you actually used to be called pudgy page like I can't even imagine that <laughs> they used to actually call me pudgy pagey and miss piggy and kids used to literally throw spit wads at me on the bus and eggs at me when I got off the bus and um it was pretty trying I would think so it was kind of like little miss sunshine that's if amazing that yeah movie. I have yeah, yeah super one cute of my movie favorites. yeah and it was it was tough I'd come home and I'd try to have a stiff upper lip and I didn't want to tell my mom and dad that mm -hmm. I was being bullied at school and I just try to stay really strong about it but kids can be so mean and so cool it is so true and especially having a little one at home now it's like you just want to protect her from that but that is part mm -hmm. of like growing up you know in the world and when did you transition into that because I know you started modeling early on and we both have a little bit of a beauty pageant background <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my former beauty queen um, but when did that turn around for you well it's kind of interesting it's it's uh, when I was about probably morphing from junior high into high school I started to become a lot more aware of my body and a lot more aware of what I could do to change my body. And physical fitness started to become something that I really paid attention to. Hmm. Thought it was really important to start working out. And so I'd get up in the morning, I'd start doing Jane Fonda workout before I'd actually <laughs> go to school. Then I'd go to cheerleading practice, then I'd do Jane Fonda workout Did again. you have the leg warmers and, and the leotard going <laughs> totally, on, right? <laughs> totally, of course. If you're doing of the course, workout, you yes. have to play the role. <laughs> you have to. And, um, the weight started to shed off and I started changing my eating habits and then I actually went from being pudgy pagey Miss Piggy to the opposite. It actually started to become an obsession and it started to get unhealthy the other way mm. on the scale. And literally I'd wake up every morning, get on the scale, see how much I weighed and became obsessed with getting thin because what was happening is the compliments would start to come oh, you've got such a beautiful face if you just lost more weight. Right. Oh my gosh, you could model. You could go into the entertainment world if you just lost weight. Gosh, I know that conversation very well. So yeah. obsession, obsession, obsession. And then I went the opposite from being overweight to being anorexic. And I didn't want to eat, didn't want food in my stomach, and was obsessed and got wow. very thin, but got a modeling contract. <laughs> Funny how that works, right? Yeah. Yeah, so how did you work your way through that? Because... I feel like, Paige, so many women, I know men deal with this too, but we're so scared to be seen. We're scared to put ourselves out there. We're, sta we're scared to start that business because of that fear of being judged. And so you've been on both spectrums. Very much so. I felt like I was like scrutinized when I was out in the entertainment world, you know, auditioning on a daily basis. You're either too tall, too thin, too blonde, too this, too that, like and constantly put under a microscope. And then when I actually started my business, the first thing that people said was, 
oh, she's just a model. Like, what is she going to know about business? Right. And the immediate judgment <laughs> of she's blonde and she kind of has a Barbie kind of look. She cannot be intelligent. Don't take her seriously. This is just a stupid idea. That, so how did you fight that, Paige? You know, I, it, it, I feel that when someone tells me that I can't do something, it makes me want to try all the harder to prove them wrong. Yeah. So I have a little bit of a rebellious streak, which I like about me because I get fiery. And when I get angry, I think there's nothing more that can propel you into forward movement than anger. Mm -hmm. So when someone says, no, I'm going to prove them wrong. So I found that as my opportunity to really take on a challenge and say, I am not going to let anyone say I can't do something. And I'm so grateful for that. And so I think that what propelled that forward movement was hard work, doing a lot of research, making sure that I knew what I was doing before I started doing it, mm -hmm. surrounding myself with people who are brilliant at things that I might not be brilliant in and making sure that I try things and not stop myself from fear. That's like so good, I'm right. going to try it no matter what. So it's kind of like that feel the fear, but do it, do anyway. it anyway. Right. It, that concept. It's like, I'm, I'm, I don't care where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm going to, I'm going to try my best and give it my A plus effort. And I was always an A-plus student. So. <laughs> that is good. And yeah, you were an honor student. You graduated early. It is funny how people want to put us in a box and say, oh, no, you look this way. You have this background. You're from this side of the street. You know, you can't achieve that. And I will find that in most people I interview, Paige, there's just this, like, veracity, this, this you know, I'm going to do it anyway, that little bit of a rebel. So, Paige, when you started Paige Denim, you were the only woman to have a premium denim line. And so you were a fit model at the time, mm -hmm. right? So for people who don't know what that is, kind of explain a little bit oh, about sure. what that is. Sure. So after uh, suffering from anorexia from being a print and runway model, um, I actually had to get to a healthy weight and not be the size zero or size two that usually graces the runways and like ha be a hanger for clothing. Right, totally healthy by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> what happened is I started to get meat on my bones and became like a healthier size, like four, six, eight. And clothing companies hire you based off of being the median of a size range. So let's say there's a clothing brand that goes from a size zero to 12. They'd hire a size six model to actually be the person that they use as a live form to design the clothes off of. So you get to work with the pattern makers and designers as a fit model. They put the clothes on you, they drape on you, and they really see how it looks on a real body. So like a live mannequin. A live mannequin, anyway. yeah. yeah, and design off of. Except for when I was actually doing fit modeling, I was very vocal, and instead of just being a body that the designers would put the clothes on, I'd literally look in the mirror, and probably because of my body dysmorphia, mm -hmm. I would like straight out say to the actual designers, I would never wear that. Look at how big my hips look. <laughs> like, how about if we change this seam and put it here, or we put this pocket here, or we move this belt loop here, or we put a princess seam or a dart here, look how much thinner I look. And I became obsessed with transforming the body in the mirror and making things look as beautiful as they can on a, on a, on a figure with curves. Oh, I love that. And I'm sure they appreciated that too. Or did they? Did they appreciate no, they it at the time? Did. <laughs> at first they would kind of look at me like, who are you to be talking? You're, right. you're not supposed to talk. You're just supposed to put the clothes on. Right. And then finally, because they were all men, literally they would look at me and be like, oh, I think she Good knows point. what she's talking yeah. about. Good point. I think we'd actually sell this better if we try that. And um, that became my expertise. So I was known as a fit model, then kind of a fit expert, and then a design consultant for um, a lot of different brands in, in, in the clothing arena. That's amazing. I mean, it's such a journey. And then you decided to launch your own denim line and you had a lot of people who were saying, don't buy from her, right? So, so yeah, so again, first woman to launch a premium denim line, having the stereotype that she's just a model, don't take her seriously, and then people telling the showrooms like not to work with you. How, again, how did you overcome that? Because I think that when people start businesses, there are constant roadblocks, and, you, and some might say, okay, it's just too hard. Well, I think that um, 
having a strong support team around me uh, is one of the things that keeps me steady and balanced and in a very positive mindset. Mm-hmm. I have a girlfriend that always says, I'm a positron. And she's like, hashtag <laughs> positron. And I feel like I wake up every day. I love it. <laughs> with like that mindset. Mm-hmm. Like I've got my workout clothes by the side of the bed, wake up get on my workout clothes, go do a workout, get my endorphins into a positive place, meditate, and like set my intentions for the day Mm -hmm. and say, this is what's going to happen today. And this has been part of my routine for years. That is a great way to start the day. It is. Yeah. And the endorphins help me with everything, staying positive. The workout helps me with my food for the day so I can eat and be healthy and have a great day. And then the intention setting helps me clarify, like what is the goal that I need to get through today that I wanna make sure happens and like focus on that intention. And so with negativity around, I don't like toxic people. So I don't have a toxic work environment. I don't like toxic people around. I don't like negative energy around. So I fill my space up Mm. with all of that positivity and then literally focus on those goals. So when people were saying, no, you can't do it, in my mind, there was no such thing as glass half full. It's glass, I mean, glass half empty. It's glass half full and I am going to make this happen. And I will set myself up for for success instead of setting myself up for failure. Mm-hmm. And some of those obstacles along the way of, the, of people saying, well, no, you can't do that or we're not going to work with you was pretty scary. I sure. mean, literally, I, I went to our first trade show, which is called Coterie in New York City, and brought my first collection to the trade show and was petrified. It's kind of like hostess anxiety. Right, yeah. You know, is like, anyone going to oh, come? Is anyone going to come look at the line? <laughs> like, does even anybody know that I'm watching a line? And um, there was this little blurb that was in W Magazine that was saying, hey, the former fit model turned designer is launching her own brand. And go see her at the booth at Coterie. And so people showed up in, like, masses at the booth. And I was so excited because I was actually even like doing, it it felt like a classroom of like talking about what what the line was and and why I started the line and showing people the different fits. And at that trade show, I wrote more business at that first trade show than I projected that I would do in a year. Wow. And that one trade show. That one trade show. And literally... That was the fuel that I needed of like, oh my gosh, if you build it, they will come. Yeah, right. Like, wow, uh, okay, I'm launching The validation that this was what, yeah, yeah. And the way that that propelled me into the positive intention thinking going forward was when wash houses and manufacturing facilities said that they wouldn't work with me because of my competitors saying, if you work with Paige, we're going to pull our business. I was able to have that, that, that right in writing like here you go this is how much business you're going to get just for my first show if you take a risk with me I'm super loyal Mm -hmm. I'll be loyal and I'll ride this adventure with you so So take a chance on me and I promise I'll be loyal to you and thank God when they, they saw those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Right. Like you're like, um, you're going to say big mistake. Big, big mistake. Huge, I know right? exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. When they first said, we're not going to work with you, I was going to say, I'm going to be just like Julia Roberts. That's right. <laughs> so how important has been trusting your intuition been to growing your business? You're now in 80 countries. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I think you said you've opened three new stores. I mean, I'm so happy for your success. I was with a girlfriend the other day, and she was telling me about her fabulous new pay, page <laughs> pair of jeans. And um, Thank you. so you have people give you advice all the time. I know you started um, a men's line as well. So talk about intuition, because I feel like as a woman in business, our intuition is imperative. It really is. It is what saves me on a regular basis. I have learned over the years to trust my intuition because of mistakes. From times that I didn't trust that voice that's either in my head or that guttural instinct that's in my gut, and started listening to the negative voices or to other voices and going down a path that didn't feel quite right, every time I've done that, it has bit me in the butt. And it's been anything from um, when I've worked with a department store, let's say, someone will say, hey, will you design this jean and give it to us as an exclusive? 
my gut will say that doesn't feel right for the brand. Like maybe it's a dropped crotch or something masculine, something that just doesn't feel like it's in alignment with what right. we stand for. Just because I want to please someone or please the retailer, I'll start to say yes. Yes. And go, I better do this or they won't probably do business with me anymore. And I go into that fear and say yes. Every time I've done that, it has turned out for the worst. It's like the, 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 it doesn't sell. They end up wanting to send it back because it didn't sell. I'll be like, that wasn't my idea to begin with. Right. And I did it for you guys. And I realize what has happened is I've gone against the grain of what I stand for. And our customer doesn't see it as authentic. Yes. They literally go, I don't believe that that's from you. I don't believe that from your brand. And every time I, I have to do that check, is it authentic? Does it feel right? Does it feel true? Is this what I stand for? Personally, is this what the brand stands for? And put that checks and balance in, in place. And then the more I've done that, the more I've trusted my intuition and know that intuition doesn't steer me wrong. That it, might be one of my favorite things I've heard. I could not agree with you more. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. It, like no. People will see whether you're congruent you know, and, and in integrity with your brand and they smell it when you're not right. Yeah. yeah. Telephony and it's no different than like being around people that are not your tribe yep. and you're trying to pretend you are, they can smell it. Yes. They can see it. They can feel it. It's like, okay, this isn't, this doesn't, this doesn't feel good. And I'm feeling like I'm being a phony baloney. And, and I think that that's my intuitive, um, gauge. So That's that a brilliant sense. business advice because Thank it you. is so easy to want to please and say, oh, well, you know what, if they're not buying this, let me come up with this. And you're like, but that's not who I am. Like this doesn't resonate with our brand and what I stand for. And so really wonderful advice. So you and your husband actually work together as well. We do. So <laughs> you work together. You obviously live together. How is that dynamic? I have to say that I am so pleasantly surprised at the dynamic and how well it works part of it might be that I came from a family that was like that okay my mom and dad at one time in their life were entrepreneurs and had a business together and that's when I was little and I was raised around what I would joke around and call shop talk mm -hmm. they'd come home every night and they'd have shop talk right and I'd be like all oh, you guys talk about is work 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 <laughs> But then I had a brother who actually was in business with his wife and then a sister who was in business with her husband. And so it's so funny. It's something that is, again, authentic. Yeah. It is so natural for me to be around a system that works that way. And when my husband decided that he thought he wanted to go on this adventure with me, we so complement each other. It's like he doesn't like to be in the limelight or on the kind of like center of attention or the ambassador of the brand. And the things that he likes to do are the things that I don't like to do. So we complement each other that way. And then at the same time, I know that the bigger question is probably, how do you guys get along? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, we don't fight. Yeah. We really get along so well. I can go through a whole day and never see him at the office because we're multitasking and doing different things. Sure. That, don't interfere with one another's jobs. And yet at the same time, um, I think that it is refreshing to know that I have a partner who has my back and has my best Absolutely interest at heart right. at yeah. all times because he wants the business to succeed just as much as I do because it's our future and our kids' futures. And, and so it really does work well. The only thing that we have to find good balance in is not bringing too much shop talk home. Right, take a break. Unplug, like mm -hmm. 24 hours, no shop talk, no shop talk. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's interesting because more and more women are becoming very successful in their businesses and more of their significant others are jumping on. Mm -hmm. And I just think, I think it's amazing. I think we're in such a beautiful time in the world where, you know, that does work and it's not about um, the woman always supporting the man and vice versa. It's really symbiotic and like really figuring out how you can build something together. And so I love that. It's so true. And I think one of the things that I love so much is that um, having a very beautifully female empowering work environment mm -hmm. is very important to me. And it is to him as well. 
So being able to know that I have faith and trust in my partner that he is going to treat the women within the company the right way right. and help empower them too and has the same philosophy. And I think he has the philosophy behind every great man is a strong woman. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and he's been my biggest fan. So yeah, that's I'm great. really grateful. Well, you know, hashtag me too is a huge movement right now. I know we've both been affected by that. Um, and that has been a huge part of why you have created this positive, safe environment at Paige. So tell us a little bit about that and that decision. Yeah, it's um, really important to me. And I feel that one of the things that motivates me even more than just financial success or business success is having a very empowered environment. I think that's my number one motivation is to have a successful business where women can be successful. Actually, within Paige, there's so many women that are the breadwinners of their own homes and the men stay at home and take care of the children and they have great jobs at Paige. Mm. So to build that kind of like super safe work environment and it is it's so important to me and the reason why in my history is that I was a victim of rape actually at the age of 16 and mm -hmm. never told a soul. I was in Alaska, didn't have anywhere to go, didn't have anyone to talk to and was super um, scared and sure. ashamed and thought it was my fault and didn't tell anyone. Fast forward to 14 years later when I'm a model in the workplace and I get attacked in the workplace on a job and had been in an environment for years, going on auditions and being treated in ways that were very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. After that, getting attacked at that workplace and knowing of a safe place to go get help, I went to the rape treatment center and um, that changed my life. I literally went to the rape treatment center and had free counseling and was able to the for the first time, go to therapy. I'd never been to therapy. Talk about what happened to me at the age of 16. Start to process everything that happened to me while I was out in the field as a model and actress and singer, and then start healing. And I actually had to go away finally to deal with my eating disorder and get treatment for that. And while I was working on all of that at the same time, healing, that's actually when I started to find my voice. I took on my attacker. Hmm. Wow. I actually found my voice. I found my strength. I found that like survival. That instinct, instinct right? Yeah. From within yeah. of like, I am going to get through this and I am going to make something out of my life mm -hmm. and I am not going to depend on a man. I am going to do this on my own and make it great. And that fight within me is what propelled me into forward movement to really find my voice mm -hmm. and that guttural survival instinct from within to know that I'm going to be a success. I'm going to fight in this world. I'm going to do my best to be the best person I can be and I'm going to get through this. And that actually led me to a life coach. And I met this amazing woman, Elizabeth Ganza, who I started talking about what I wanted to be when I grew up because it wasn't hmm. really healthy for me to be in front of the camera anymore. Right. Sure. I needed to take a shift change. I was still fit modeling and loving it, but um, wanted to find my purpose and my passion in life. And she is the one who planted the seed and said, why don't you think about starting your own clothing company? I said, I can't do that. I didn't go to business school. And, you know, she's like, think about starting your own company. She goes, you I love empowering love people. Yeah. You love women. You love clothes. She's like, put together your dream team and think of a homework assignment or take this as a homework assignment and think about if you were going to start your own brand, what would it look like? Just go home and think about it, put it on a board, manifest it and come back to me with your homework next week. And so that literally is how Paige was born. And I went home and did my homework and I mentioned it to my husband and he said, if you don't do this, you're going to regret it the rest of your life. Wow. What and, a story, Paige, because if you didn't go to the rape treatment center and like find your voice, find that instinct, that fighter, like you wouldn't be anywhere near where you are 
today. And not just, not just um, commercially, right? But just with everything that you've created and how you empower so many other women. And now you're on the board there as well and, and mentor these young women that are going through these really tough times. So that is, thank you for sharing. It's a really beautiful story. Thank you. I think it's my responsibility to share mm -hmm. and to hopefully help someone if they've ever been through something like this, know that there are safe places to go. You are only as sick as your secrets and mm. the healing begins when you start talking about it, not stuffing it and holding it inside. So once I started doing that and Humpty Dumpty, in a sense, got put back together again and yeah. I started to heal is when I had the energy to finally pay it forward, start a company, create a safe work environment, you know, lift people up, support them, have women never go through what I had to go through in my work environment right. or in our work environment at Paige. Mm -hmm. And then now I get to mentor other people and there's nothing I like more. That's yeah. the most fulfilling part is being able to pay it forward. You know, there's something that I often say, which is so difficult when you go, th go through something so traumatic. I say, everything happens for us, not to us. And when you go through something like that, you think, how in the world can this be happening for me? But look at the woman that you are today, Paige, and what you're able to do because you went through, you know, those those really horrific times. So um, I just, yeah, I love it. And that's why everyone should go out and buy Paige Denham. <laughs> they are amazing. Thank you. Amazing, by the way. Um, so, okay. So I always ask my guests, what are three yeah. things that you would tell someone who is looking to, book, to grow a business? What three tips would you give someone? I think that the three tips I would tell someone if they were growing a business is to definitely be authentic and not listen to too many mm -hmm. chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> because I feel like there's one thing that you can do when you're asking for advice and you can take in all of the information and all of the advice, but run it past that intuitive authenticity like meter and make sure that it sticks and feels right for you and for the business or for what it is that you're thinking of doing. Because if you don't, you'll be in that people pleasing mode and it, it gets, it gets it's a tough place tough. to be. Yeah, yeah. You have to yeah. be focused. The other thing I would say is um, don't be afraid to make mistakes because it's the mistakes that you learn from that make you even better mm -hmm. because it's like it, it, not everything can be perfect and it's about progress and it's about learning and if I wouldn't have made some of the mistakes that I made 10 years ago, I wouldn't know how to problem solve on the bigger scale when it's even more critical that I make a right. good decision now. So Genius advice. So great. Don't be afraid of that. And third, have fun. Yeah. Literally, it's like, I don't think it's worth working as hard as I do running a business and running around the country and trying to stay relevant in fashion if I didn't love it and I wasn't having fun. Right. Yeah. And Gotta have fun. <laughs> and I have yeah. to have a fun team. Yes. I like being around fun people. Ah, uh, good um, advice, Paige. Okay. You. And my last question for you mm -hmm. is what does inspired living mean to you? Um, such a good question. Oh, inspired living means hope. Mm. I think it literally is hope every day that you are going to live the life that you've always dreamed of. And I, for one, don't ever want to feel like I'm not inspired on a daily basis because then I feel like my spirit would get crushed. Mm -hmm. It's like inspiration is everything. It's what keeps me going. It's like something to look forward to. It's looking at everything around me and trying to breathe it in and see why I met someone on a certain day and what it is that they said to me that might make a difference in, in my life that day or if there's a message or a hidden meaning on a sign that I see when I'm driving or mm -hmm. a color that I see when I'm out walking my dogs, like hiking in nature that all of a sudden I go, oh my God, I didn't even notice that last week. But this week, that's the prettiest color palette for the next season. Right. It's like oh, really it's drinking everything yeah. in and around and, and not being stuck in, 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 in a place without being able to look at the beautiful gifts that are around. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. And you are certainly hope for a lot of people. Like I think that a lot of, um, 
I know people who work with you are inspired by you and all the work that you're doing in the world, Paige, to help empower other women. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that hope. Thank now, if you. someone, obviously, your your lines are all over the country, but if someone wanted to shop online, because you know how much we love to do that, <laughs> how, <laughs> of course. how do we find you? Watch an in, Inspire Living interview. Yes, and then absolutely. Go yes. <laughs> Those are my two favorite things. Well, I'm actually, um, Paige the brand is at page.com. And we are a full lifestyle brand now, so it's not just about denim. We're not even called Page Denim anymore. It's Page. Okay. And it's a lifestyle brand for men and women. So you can complete your wardrobe from head to ankle um, by going to page.com. Beautiful. Well, I'm, I'm going. I hope you will join us. And thank you so much for watching this Inspired Living interview. I hope you are inspired, and we would love to hear from you. So please post your comments below. And when you are inspired, you inspire others. So please share this with someone that you care about. Thank you again, Paige, Thank you so, so much. much. So Love lovely it. to see you. Thank I'm so you. glad we finally got to make this happen. I know, me too. And until next time, mm -hmm. remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Mm -hmm.